What is up everyone, today's video is an iKings Daily Report and today I will be covering an update to the information regarding the TARDIS Flight GUI. A new video slash post will be posted each time significant updates to this feature are pushed. Let's get right on into the general description of this feature. So I know I don't talk a lot about the TARDIS uh, much and newer followers of the Doctor Who Climb Mod may, uh, may have not known what the TARDIS Flight GUI is. So I thought I would take this opportunity to update the uh, TARDIS Flight GUI post as well as get a new video out with all the new information. So the TARDIS can fly in any sp any kind of space, right? It does it all the time, you just don't see it on screen. The TARDIS doesn't just go or do its wheezy thing sound and magically appear somewhere. What it does is it creates a tunnel through space time and while doing so it folds space in a way that connects, a po uh, connects point A to point B in a short distance rather than a l greater distance. Now when the TARDIS uh, dematerializes, it goes into the time vortex and it has to navigate the tunnels, or rather wormholes, of the vortex to reach its destination. The TARDIS has a limited autopilot function, which is why you really, where you, uh, why you rarely see the Doctor ever really truly navigating. In the Doctor Who Climb Mod, there are three flight options. One manual flight through the TARDIS Flight GUI, uh, the second one autopilot, or manual flight through the use of the TARDIS console. So let's get on into the specific features of the TARDIS Flight GUI. So mo the most notable feature of the tar uh, TARDIS Flight GUI is the Gallifreyan animated displays. Now on the top right, you have the Artron Energy Meter. This will show in numbers how much Artron Energy you have left before the TARDIS will no longer be able to fly in, the, in normal space. Now on the other hand, Rift Energy determines temporal travel. Coordinate Display, uh, input or output uh, a set of coordinates to dematerialize and rematerialize at the location of the coordinates. Uh, the location of this meter is below the Artron Energy Meter. Now then you have the star chart uh, button, click the star chart button and the world selection GUI will pop up. Once you select your choices in the world selection GUI, you will dematerialize and enter the time vortex. Next up is the temporal and spatial rift detector display, which is the top left Gallifreyan symbol display. Uh, this shows temporal anomalies such as rifts and paradoxes. If you are flying by a rift, the animation will speed up, however if there is a paradox, depending on the severity, it will either slow down or completely stop. Uh, temporal Stellar Locational Display. This is the bottom left Gallifreyan symbol display. Uh, it has no apparent purpose yet, however it will deal with time zones and stellar locations in the future. Uh, next up is the Directional Velocity Display. Uh, this is the bottom right Gallifreyan display. This, di this shows the direction and speed slash velocity the TARDIS is traveling in. Uh, next up is the Rift Energy Meter. This is the bottom center display. This display shows how much Rift Energy you have be, uh, have left before the player needs to stop and refuel at a temporal rift. Most notable rift location is in Cardiff above the Torchwood Hub uh, slash Hub Ruins, depending on what time zone you go to. And, uh, yeah, I think it's Rondal Pass, I think it's called in real life. Yeah. Uh, rift Energy determines temporal travel while as mentioned above. Uh, the Artron energy determines spatial travel. Now, there are two different modes to this flight GUI. Number one is the normal flight. If you are fly if you are flying with full power and and you're not crashing into everything around you, the display will show a normal looking screen. However, there is turbulent flight. If the TARDIS is running low on Artron and Rift Energy, or one or the other, or it's being attacked, or you just crash into something, the screen will get all distorted and statically, giving you the feel you are being attacked, running low on power, or crashing into something. In the console room, we plan to have spark particle animations and sparking sound effects. Next up is the autopilot button, which has not been added in yet. However, this feature will allow the user to disengage from the TARDIS flight UI and walk around the TARDIS while uh, the TARDIS flies itself around. Uh, manual control, uh, manual console control. This feature will override the TARDIS flight GUI and allow the player to control the TARDIS through the TARDIS console. Now that means you'll be able to m switch things. Uh, yeah, I hope you, everyone enjoyed this video. If you did like it and like what we are doing with all of our projects, please click the subscribe button and the like button. Don't forget to comment on this video, like this video, and register on the iKings SGC forums to keep up with our community. And stay tuned after the important links outro for bloopers. Uh, talk to you all in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. So, yeah.
Next up is the Temporal and Spatial Rift Detector Display. On the top left, uh, it shows the Temporal Anomaly... It... Okay, let's start. <laughs> oh, fuck. 